Welcome to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. I am in the hotel room of Ryan Hemsworth. Hi, Ryan. How's it going? Very well. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. For those who don't know anything about you, can you describe yourself in one or two sentences? Um, white, average sized, average weight from Canada, so not very interesting. Well, but... hold up, dude. This isn't your personal ad. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess that's uh, that pretty much sums me up, though, in a few words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you're also a producer and you make some music. Yeah, that's, that's another thing that I guess should be mentioned. <laughs> Hi, this is Ryan Hemsworth, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. Back to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard Charlie Wingate by Ryan Hemsworth. I've got Ryan here with me. Ryan, I'd love it if you could talk a bit about that track. This one I've been sitting on for six or seven months. Um, it was supposed to be on my last EP, and then I took it off because Brodinski reached out and said, hey, we want to put this out. And I was like, yes, I will wait for you. But then they had a whole bunch of amazing releases from other artists, so I got impatient and put it on this one. And I'm glad it's finally out because it's it's one of my favorite ones I've made. It's a crazy combination of 80s samples and Max B and basically all these different musical worlds that I I love to inhabit. Yeah. Was this the start of the Ryan Hemsworth Brodinsky feud? <laughs> No, you're not going to start that one. <laughs> We're not going to put that out there. <laughs> We're still in mad bromantic love. So I was looking you up today, and your Twitter account gives your email, and it says inquiries or cookie recipes. So what's Grandma's secret ingredient? The secret? I mean, it's it's all in actually when you take it out of the oven, I'd say. Because a lot of people are, you know, trying to rush it, trying to let it get golden and perfect but the recipe i have you have to take it out and it looks like it's gonna turn to crap but anyways yeah if that's <laughs> if you actually wanted a serious answer for the cookie question you just got one nice, <laughs> nice. your work is under your real name and that's pretty rare for producer these days yeah no disrespect to anybody who does that but i just i'm not crazy about putting triangles and 
the middle of my name and stuff like that. I, I, um, I figured just be as straight up about my name and who I am and everything is possible and, you know, put my picture on my Twitter and people will have something to hold on to instead of, um, you know, a lot of producers in my, uh, perspective right now and my, in my same way are, uh, you know, hiding their faces and stuff like that, which is cool to have like the mysterious mystique of it all. But at the same time, you know, you don't know who these people are in the end and they could be just, you know, hiding to the fact that they're not actually that cool. Whereas I'm like, Hey, I'm not that cool, you know, upfront about it. Why not? <laughs> Well, so far, that plan's working out. So the one thing I've read about you in every article is that everybody loves to make a big deal out of the fact that you did all this, you accomplished all this from Halifax, which doesn't have a big electronic music scene. So first I'll ask, if you lived in L.A., do you think your sound would be radically different? No, because I wouldn't. I would have as little amount of friends there probably as I do in Halifax. I've got, you know, uh, I'm... That's the thing. Everybody, you're right. Everybody introduces me as dude from Halifax makes this music. It doesn't sound like Halifax. And I guess that's kind of the point. I mean, a lot of stuff from Halifax is rock or folk or whatever. But um, maybe that's I've excelled in what I'm doing because I kind of stay away from that and just sit in my bedroom and uh, make music and go on the Internet. So I'm not as much affected by wherever I am as the internet, you know, and what's going on that day and what I'm listening to. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the cool things about guys that are coming up now is that the internet has really become a scene. So what do you think are the limits of that? Um, you know, I, I would want to say a lot of the chemistry that comes out of being face to face with people, whether it, it's just people to have conversations with or to actually jam with and, uh, you know, work on stuff in a studio. That's definitely something that um, I've lacked a little bit when I work with rappers who are, you know, down in Oakland or wherever. So that's a part of it. And but you know, there's there's so many benefits to it, um, especially from someone uh, like me who just enjoys, you know, kind of sitting and you know, I'm quiet and I just kind of chill. So like I, I I wonder, you know, if I didn't have the internet, I probably wouldn't put myself out there just to meet people at clubs and be like yo let's work on some stuff you know i like to kind of be you know in solitude and sitting and stuff <laughs> hi this is ryan hemsworth and you're listening to the interview show with scott wood She used to tell me follow my heart till the bitch stepped on me to the heart. She used to tell me follow my heart till the bitch stepped on me to the heart. She used to tell me follow my heart till the bitch stepped on me to the heart. She used to tell me follow my heart till the bitch stepped on me to the heart. I be like, more shows, more dough, more bitches. Them hoes hatin', tell them mind they business. Get some cash, watch they ass go and see a dentist. I be getting money, that's my only mission. Stuntin' ain't your hobby, cause you never do it right. My niggas getting money, they ain't fucking with that wife. Be stressed for days and long nights spent on this mic. Perfecting my craft so I can see the limelight. Fuck a soulmate, I find her when the time right. My life is shambles, I'm just tryna get my mind right. Popping out a roll and smoke into my eyes tight. Cause I promised mama that crib that sit up to the right. Overlooking mountains, got a way just to count it. Money flowing like a fountain, I don't need no accountant. Not to mention the shit that I be spitting, so astounding. I'm overstepping my boundaries, labels wishing that they found me. I'm a fool for the gold, dollars don't hold value. You shopping for that bullshit, it's over there on our too. You can have it. I never sell my soul to get these cameras. What the fuck I look like? Roger the rabbit. I done came a long way from sipping on the piss and mattress. Now fresh as fuck. Bitches say they like my accent. Hoes used to call me low. That was past tense. Now they pulling spinners out their ass from riding that bench. I came up quick. Can you believe it? Them hoes throwing up. Like they believe me. I get the bitches the cold shoulder like I'm a anemic. How much more can I take before I say it to they face? It's kind of hard, say. I'm 
Lost in the music, with no way out Balancing bullshit, hope it weighs out I bring the grills back, niggas say they played out My style critically acclaimed, nigga I can't fade out Are oh, you on fire? Well I'ma blow your flame out Let it got that Mustang, keep out the blow the brains out They see a lesson, get your bitch wet She wanna hang out, slide through before the show So she can get banged out I'm cool as a motherfucker still Spitting cold lyrics that they give you boys and chills Never sugarcoated shit, I always kept it real I can't tell it like you tell it, so I tell it like it is On the road to riches, trying to drive with no wheels I'm a fucking starving artist, so I'm trafficking them pills I can see my ribs, I'm in need of a meal A big man on the heel off a six figure deal Just to please my baby But she was lacking the deal Spoon fed her everything Bad bitch with no wheel Motivation and skill You can't even help yourself How you gon' help somebody else Your book a closed chapter Put your ass back on the shelf I ain't saying names I'm speaking on these dames So they can try to sue me When they get a piece of chain A shame What a fucking disgrace When I say your wax I can say it to they face Hey Welcome back to The Interview Show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard Grimes, her track Genesis, remixed by Ryan Hemsworth. I've got Ryan here with me. I'd love you to talk about your remix of that song. Um, This one, I just kind of wanted to flip on its head completely. Um, The original is uh, double time from what my remix is, and it's really fun and upbeat. And this one, my remix, I just wanted to make it dark and you know something big in the club and just also i didn't have any of the stems or anything to work with so i basically just dropped all of the everything from the song except her high pitch squealy grimesy stuff she does and um made it something of my own i think yeah can you talk about working with the rapper on the track oh yeah that was uh just a you know a funny after effect and that was with de niro ferrar who's from North Carolina. And that was my first contact with him. Um, he literally just sent me a DM on Twitter and was like, yo, would it be okay if I rapped on this song? And I was like, sure, why not? And he's like, cause I rapped on it. And then he sent it to me and it sounded awesome. And we put it out and people seem to like it. So, you know, nice things just kind of happen via Twitter and stuff like that. It's strange. I love you, Internet Phenoms. It just happens so easily. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, if you have Twitter and Dropbox and all that stuff, you can, you know, make a a worldwide hit if you you have those. (laughs) And, you know, if you're good at music and stuff. (laughs) I read an interview with you earlier. This was in May of this year. You were talking about where you hadn't done many shows, and, of course, now it's later and you've done more. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how being a performer has affected what you do. Yeah, it's actually um, definitely affects when I, you know, open up a project and I'm thinking, what is this next song going to sound like? I'm I'm not trying to make, you know, club bangers or anything like that, but it it definitely makes me think, you know, what, maybe I should make this a little faster. So maybe there's the opportunity to, for it to work both in a club and just someone sitting at home listening on headphones. You know, I'm trying to... um, you know, a lot of people don't try to do that. I guess they, they go for one or the other, but uh, I think it would be awesome if um, both work in in many situations. And uh, that's been working with my last EP. Uh, I've been playing out stuff and people get down to it. And they also tell me, you know, I fell asleep to the EP the other night and stuff. So it works on a few levels, which I'm happy with. Awesome. I've also read that you like to search the internet for bad feedback. So I was hoping you could talk about that. Why? <laughs> um, I definitely, I, I'm always just, you know, I've got Google alerts and I see whatever is posted on me anyway. So I, uh, I read the good and the bad. You know, it's always good to hear exactly what people are thinking on you. And, you know, I, whenever I get a review, I definitely check that out just to see, okay. It, you, it doesn't completely 
affect what you're going to do next. You're not just looking to please these certain people because, you know, it's only a handful of people who are writing about you. But it's always great to have another voice than your own in your head while you're working on a song, you know? Cool. I've also read that you love video game soundtracks. Can you tell me what your favorite song from a video game is right now? Or let's go, of all time. Oh, all time. Uh, you're going to put me on the spot like that. Um, the soundtracks definitely come down to Donkey Kong Country, to Ocarina of Time, and Earthbound. The one that's just jumping out of my mind right now is, um, I think it's just the home music from Earthbound. And it's just this really... It, the track is called Home Sweet Home, and it's just a very sweet um, combination of, like, fake bad guitar uh, synth and, like, this weird bass and stuff. It's very, it's a weird combination of sounds, but it feels very homey and nice and, <laughs> yeah. I don't know that one. Can you do a bit? <laughs> Well, maybe uh, I might drop it tonight in my show. You <laughs> stick around, and it's it's very likely. I like to throw in video games and stuff like that. But for the listeners that are listening, they won't know. Oh. Well, it goes a little like boom, doom, 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 etc. For about two minutes. Awesome! Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Hi, this is Ryan Hemsworth, and you're listening to the interview show with Scott Wood.
Welcome back to the interview show. This is Scott Wood, your host. You just heard Slurring, the Bauer remix by Ryan Hemsworth. I'm sitting here right beside Ryan Hemsworth in his hotel room. Ryan, I'd love it if you could talk a bit about that track. That one, along with the other remixes on this uh, EP, I have been so happy about because they're all by friends and they're all also amazing pieces of music. Um, This one specifically by Bauer, he is like such a nice dude and he's been at the head of like all you know this quote-unquote trap club music right now but he's like the best dude and I play this song at every show I play because it's amazing and it's probably the best one the best song I play during the night so I'm so glad he supplied me with that. (laughs) You have a journalism degree and you've interviewed guys like Girl Talk or Theophilus London. How's that informed what you do? Um, yeah, I, uh, past four years I've been studying and not so much studying and working on music, but when I do, I try to make it fun and reach out to people who, you know, in, were in positions where I'd like to be in. So, you know, I think the, the biggest part that has helped me from studying and all that is just, you know, uh, being able to ask people for stuff and, uh, not be as hesitant because I'm I'm definitely that type of person who doesn't want to you know reach out and beg people for things but it's a really important thing of both the music world and the journalism world so yeah it's taught me to grow balls a bit I guess <laughs> can you give me an example the very first interview I did was uh, Theophilus London and that was just because I was a huge fan when his first mixtape dropped uh, I'm not as crazy about his stuff right now, but uh, like when Jam dropped, I was just listening to that on the regular, and I don't know why I just found his email on his MySpace, I think at the time, and I was like, screw it, like uh, it'd be cool to just talk to this guy, and I emailed him, and he replied to all the questions that I sent, you know, within like five hours, I think, and you know, at the end it was like sent from my BlackBerry, so I just like to like picture this dude who at the time probably didn't have that much going on so he was just sitting at home and texted me back this full interview and yeah I don't know it's just it's nice when you get that response from people whether it's you know for an interview or for a a remix or whatever you're doing yeah can you give a 101 for bands and talking to press uh just don't go that fast like just do like whatever you are about you're about to hit send and you've got this like perfect little intro and all this going on delete a lot of it and then just and then send it maybe like just and and sleep on it as well before you send it because i i I did a blog for a while and like that was when i got the the emails that were like you know one line or like uh, maybe a paragraph and two but like very you know personal and um not the same as every other 300 emails that you get. Those are the ones that you're like, all right, I'll check it out quick. Or just, you know, a good, like, subject line or something like that, you know. You have to stand out, but, you know, not be overwhelming. Can you tell me the most difficult question? I have to say that again. Can you tell me the most difficult question that you've been asked by the press and the diplomatic way you've answered it? Oh, the most difficult question. Man, the funny thing is, like, I'm f- I've only been doing interviews the past couple of months so i hmm a bad question the hardest ones for me are like you know taking out like specific points of my past like when was the first time you heard your favorite album that made you need to make this song and stuff like that you know it my brain doesn't really work in that way i kind of just go with it so a bad question? I don't I'm still waiting on that horrible question and you haven't done it yet, so <laughs> that's all I can say. Fair enough, well, Ryan, you've made it to the end of this interview. Thank you very much for coming on my show. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. At the end of the show, I love the guest to pick one track and talk a bit about it, one track of theirs and talk a bit about it as I bring up the music. Okay, I guess uh 
one that a lot of people initially uh, drew a lot of people to me was uh, Good Things Can Never Last, which was from my No Plans uh, album. And that was, the funny thing is that's really more of like a remix or a bootleg or something because it's entirely just from this 80s song and uh, I just pitched it down and added some drums and it took on this whole different vibe I feel like and um, that it got played on BBC and stuff like that and so it, it, it was like these these songs I make the quickest I made that one probably in like under an hour are the ones that people hold on to the most so I think I need to just stop spending time on songs so that, that was a lesson I learned from that one <laughs> All right, so we're going to listen to Good Things Can Never Last by Ryan Hemsworth. <laughs> Hi, this is Ryan Hemsworth, and you're listening to The Interview Show with Scott Wood. Change. 